Okay, so I, th I believe we've done a few things that uh, in channel eyes that, that actually came from uh, wireless field day discussions. Uh, one was the color by utilization, which is kind of you know how constant and how loud a transmitter is, so how we can accomplish that better. But the, the point of Channelizer is to help us help you get your job done quicker. And so these, these features are, are meant to do that. So this one is we've, we've implemented the network filters. Uh, and this will allow you to do um, filters on top of filters. So you can say filter by vendor Cisco. You can filter by um, vendor Arrowhive or Ruckus or anything like that. You can also filter by MAC address. Uh, actually, no, not on this one. Um, that's that's an IPA. Sorry, <laughs> but uh, you can you can say I want to see anything that has MetaGeek, and if it may have GN or AN after that, and it'll, you can do MetaGeek just that, and it'll show all the ones that are MetaGeek. You can also uh, filter by encryption and channels is really nice because you can actually enter in commas or dashes, so you can say. Uh, channels 2 through 5, comma, 7 through 10 to see any of the uh, SSIDs that are not on your channels 1, 6, and 11. So there's a lot of powerful things that you can do here. More importantly, uh, in the reporting, once you f apply a filter, that's going to affect what you add to the reporting block. So if you want to say, okay, these are all of your SSIDs, let's, uh, let's create a table that does that. And then I can show you anything that is not your SSIDs by using an exclusive, uh, yeah, an exclusive filter. So you can take out their networks, and they'll show these are all of the competing networks, you know, on all of these channels in the 2.4 or 5 gigahertz. However, you want to build it, but it makes your reporting a lot easier. Uh, I've seen a lot of reporting tools that just uh, spew out a huge list of every single wireless network, and it's very hard to do. With this tool, you can apply the filters. And then you can sort by column, any of the columns, and then add that network block to the report builder, and it's done. Uh, we also added um, the ability, the session manager, I think we talked about last time, but this time you can actually name them. And the idea was you'd be able to walk around and name a session based on your rooms or your floors or however you typically do your site survey. It's, it's helping you remember where you were and what you saw. So you can say clone active session is going to keep the same configuration and you give it a name. That way when you open the capture to build a report or to kind of educate someone about your Spectrum site survey, you can actually uh, look and say, okay, well I saw this on the first floor. This is where it was. <coughs> okay. So this is the part where you bring out your spectrum, uh, your your jammers or something like that. But <laughs> don't joke about that. They have those. I I, I watched a little bit of a, of the wild packets. So uh, <laughs> so to demonstrate uh, the the filtering capabilities, uh, we've we've built in kind of the the 2.4 gigahertz band filters. So this is going to change our list. I'm going to bring this list a little bit higher. Okay, uh, the, I, all, of the, all of these are the tables. We, we bring out the vendor. Uh, we bring out uh, you know, the, the signal strength over time. So if I want to sort by the RSSI, you, you just click once or twice like this. And then if I want to filter by Cisco APs, I can type in Cisco here. And that will bring all the APs that have a Cisco vendor. Or uh, speak up if you have a question. If, if anybody has um, questions too, can you speak up a little louder because the people at home had a little trouble hearing the microphones. Trent, question. Yes. Uh, you obviously have some OUI lookup table. Yes. Is that editable by us? No. I wish. That'd be cool. Because you've, you've, you've given us feedback saying there's more more updated one. Uh, this only gets updated when, the, when someone like me or you goes to Ryan and says, we need. No, we <laughs> <laughs> so, do you want to edit it, or do you and want it updated it. all the time? Uh, updated all the time would be bad. Would be okay. Good because but the edit is a nice feature, so that we can say these are ours. I know I bought all of these. There's three Mac OUIs 
that are installed in my building. Gotcha. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I, could, I could kind of group those that way. Too. Uh huh. Yeah. That's cool. I like that. Because um, the OUI.txt file that we get off the internet is massive. And then we have to like parse through all that to try to get it to a short list kind of thing. Um, so you could go in and edit OUI.txt and it would be ugly. So that, I don't think that is a good solution to edit the file that we have directly. But um, I like what you're saying with just, we have these three, we know who they are, let's add that in. Well, it's almost like, uh, like what OmniPeak was talking yesterday, known and unknown rogues. Right. In a way, where you had the ability to go through and say, hey, I know these devices, these are known, and these devices aren't known. Actually, the past two wireless field days, I think we've had what AP aliasing brought up. Mm -hmm. You can even do, a, do like a crowdsourcing to be able to have people go into your, the website, into the MediGeek website, and submit and say, you know, Cisco came out with these new, new APs, it's now this is the OUI identifier. And well, as soon as we do that, that, someone is going to, yeah. you know, <laughs> this is Barney McFarney. You, know. <laughs> <laughs> you put in your controls on it, and you, yeah. you don't have it so that it directly right. updates that file and puts it into the application. Yeah. You have it so that, okay, these people. Because you said it's when some of us email you guys what the OUIs are. This is a, a better way to get that information, then yeah. you can still scrub it and still yeah. put it in. We often look up those o OUI lookup sites and they're out of date because obviously for the same reason, it's mm -hmm. just a static database. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Or it's Linksys, Cisco, Linksys, Linksys, Cisco, and it's mm. yep. Apple, Hon Hai. Mm -hmm. So uh, <coughs> this this will be fun because I, I really like I like it when you guys bring your jammers. <laughs> because you can see that uh, we don't even see the shape of Wi-Fi anymore. It's completely backed off and probably jumped to a different channel uh, here. So this is, for those of you who haven't seen this, this presentation, uh, we try to make your job easier and quicker. Uh, and we, this is the waterfall navigation. And, and think of it like a seismograph or a seismometer where, you know, it, when an earthquake ha happens, a scribble gets really huge. Well. When, when events happen, we see that they get more red. So you know exactly the points of interest that you want to look at. So you can jump to any point in time by double clicking and changing your time window to investigate these events. But this is what the shape of Wi-Fi look, look like on channel one here. And once we see that, uh, that transmitter came on up at the top of the screen, we see that the shape has completely changed. So this is the this is the the type of changes that can happen in the spectrum, and it's and it's fairly easy to to make those comparisons with uh, the amplitude history navigation. Okay, so we are talking about the the networks table filtering, and I thought this would be kind of fun. We can a I can actually show you the the, the networks tables. So I'm going to filter all the, the the networks that are on channel one. <coughs> And then I'm going to select all of them. And we can see a point in time where all of these networks dropped off because there's interference. So to highlight that to someone, I'm just going to go into report. And in these reports, you can add you know, your report title, your company logo, prepared for, prepared by, all of those things. Uh, and I'm just going to skip that because it's going to take a lot of my time. But I'm going to add the, the density block and I'm going to add a waterfall block. I'm going to add the networks table block. And this networks table is going to respect uh, my filters here. So it's anything that meets my filters. If I wanna if I wanna say only show me the H H, -H honors here. Actually I just took those out. So you can do exclusive filters, but if you if you have this positive button clicked here, uh, you can type in HH honors here, and uh, and then I if I want to update that block with let's say I you know this block is no longer out it, it's outdated now I can actually just click the refresh button and it updates to what my networks table currently looks like. And if I want to say show me the honors SSID and the AT and T. I can add that on top, and it's going to um, take these two filters and allow both of those. If I wanted to, um, you know, you just click the X button to remove all of them, but you can see those here. Can you 
When when I've got say five six filters created, can I drag filters to reorder them, or do I have to? They're all going to they're there? all going to be applied the same. Okay. So uh, there's there's no order. Okay. Uh, actually, I. So you asked me to and an or. I think they're all anded. Okay, so I'm showing the, the honors, and this is my networks table as it is, so we can see the network dropping out because of that interference. And then I can add that to visually show uh, the networks graph here. So this, this is what it looks like in the preview here. I don't have a logo. And it's hard to see probably in the cameras or on the live stream or something like that, but you can you can actually see the green light drop out, the green line drop out due to someone bringing in a transmitter. Okay, so uh, a few other uh, pro features of, well in my opinion, the pro features of the pro software. These are the ones that a lot of people don't um, catch on immediately and that's because we've intentionally hid them so you can discover them at wireless <laughs> filter. <laughs> uh, we allow, uh, if you go to the save button, there's a little arrow down there and that's where you do non-save activities. For example, appending other blocks. So this is where you can build a report or build common blocks that you have done before for example, if I want to add uh, some blocks that are called devices that interfere, just for customer education purposes, I can actually add several blocks of, you know, of varying types of interference, Bluetooth, microwave ovens, OFDM, oh, well, that's Wi-Fi, but um, you can add multiple blocks. And these blocks will actually respect the colors and everything that you have done uh, when you created it. So if I wanted to change the, the color scheme or if I didn't even want a density map, I can add a block of this one and it'll just show the networks as they are. Or I can turn on the average, the max, your typical spectrum analysis view and change the colors of those as well. So it's pretty powerful. It's, it's very, very customizable. You also have the ability to add images uh, which is pretty nice because, and you know, this this um, this report block that I'm adding has nothing to do with with spectrum analysis. But if you want to make suggestions, so if you see too much 2.4 gigahertz uh, interference and you want to suggest a 5 gigahertz capable access point, you can add blocks that have all the details about a, a particular access point. So when you, you can have an image and then you can have all the text, all the marketing specs that, that matter to a customer. So you can look at, you can uh, easily have these blocks pre-made as a report file and then import that into Channelize Report and just say, okay, here are the survey steps that I did and let me add a whole group of blocks at the end of every single report and generate a report very quickly. The report blocks also respect the time span that you, that you have selected. So if I want to go back to a certain part of time to highlight the point where someone had that, that video transmitter, I can change my time span to that very small piece of time where that video transmitter was on, and that is what the block will look like when I add it. And we can also go to the channels table, and this one is pretty useful because this is going to show what the, what the levels or the, the utilization was for every single Wi-Fi channel here. So these are, d these are uh, dependent on your time span that you have selected there. And you can go through, uh, recorded sessions, uh, you can go through live, you can build a rep report as you go, uh, and you can also change your configuration to go to the 5 gigahertz or, or zoom into something else. So you can uh, start building all types of reports from live data, from recorded data. So if I were to open up 
a recording um, um, for example 802.11ac how many of you guys have seen 802.11ac with a spectrum analyzer okay so 802.11ac uh, I believe what's shipping out right now is 80 megahertz wide so that's taking up four channels so OFDM makes that kind of flat top shape and uh, that's because it has so many subcarriers, and we can actually get into fine uh, a finer resolution of each of those. But uh, this is what it looks like. This is what you can expect in the future. Actually, you can expect you know up to 160 megahertz wide. So it's it's going to get wider. So when when people are telling you the five gigahertz is open and clear, well, you know, eventually it's going to fill up because we only see three three active networks in the five gigahertz, but we can already see our channels start to, start to start to change. So I'll add that to my report as well. And I'll add a channels table for, for fun. Okay, and a few other things in the report builder, you can actually add um, custom text blocks. So if you find yourself talking about certain things a lot, you can add a, a custom text block. Uh, for example, I have one that's about rogue APs and, and web security recommendations. Uh, and then you can also add image blocks. So some people find it really useful to walk around a site and take a picture of, you know, these are the wireless audio headsets that are causing problems on the, on the network. And they say these are what you need to look for. And they can use the report pillar as a way of helping companies develop a, a spectrum policy, which is going to be very important for the to bring your own device revolution public. Mm-hmm. It's reason they listen to my podcast. I did. Actually, <laughs> it's, it's all right. the one. <laughs> 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 <Pinch> rocky. <laughs> Trent, can we uh, get a copy of that? Of that AC recording. that recording? Yeah. Uh, sure. I have your email, um, so I'll send it cool. after. Appreciate that. Thanks. Okay. Uh, one other thing. So the sessions, as you uh, go through the sessions, uh, let's. We talked a little bit about this, but each of these sessions is is going to help you design uh, your reports a little bit better. So as you're walking around, you can actually name these lo as locations. So we'll I'll call this the boardroom. Two point four gigahertz. That's going to help me remember what I was doing when I made the capture. And then I can go into the 5 gigahertz here, and I can call this the boardroom 5 gigahertz. So as you're walking around, you can actually start to name it. So when you build your report, everything makes sense instead of saying, well, where was I when I did that? You know, where, what, where was that interference? So we've made it easier to build the reports. So when you start toggling between these sessions, so each one that I am viewing right now is going to be uh, highlighted in green here. Each one that I'm viewing, that, that will tell me uh, the, the location that I was, and then I can add that to the block. Trent, could you possibly add, you flip back one page to sure. where you had a little green box around it? Yeah. Could you, when you label one of those, is it possible to put a little arrow or a flag in the uh, timeline stream so we can find the timeline and go back quickly to it? Mm -hmm. Uh, actually, the the timeline. So this this right here. Yeah. So in the long waterfall, a little marker. That this shows is another like, thing that we we do to trick you guys. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this this actually is the full session. So when you when you're viewing this uh, this time, this timeline here, that is the full boardroom 2.4 gigahertz mini capture. And then if I go to the one here, see the capture. See, it says in progress here. So I'm viewing recorded data mm -hmm. previously while I'm capturing the 5 gigahertz. And so if I go here, then the full waterfall switches over to this. You did a great job. I was faked out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. Um, this is always fun to do. Uh, you can zoom into a smaller frequency range and some of you have, have tweeted me and asked for um, 
some some captures where I showed some of the subcarriers. Yeah. So if you leave this running or if someone starts pumping a lot of data, we can actually see the, the finer lines of the subcarriers of, of OFDM. So that's all I have for Channelize Pro. Any questions? What's the uh, exporting? What kind of options do you have? It exports export it? in RTF or HTML. Okay. So you'll be able to open it up in Microsoft Word and customize it a little bit. And then if you Take want to do a PDF there. Sure. Yep. The dual band capable concurrent replacement for DBX. Is there any left on On concurrent? Uh, no. Still. Two adapters. Hmm? Two adapters at once, right? Yeah, so that yeah, right the, now so the solution would be you giving us more money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's the honest answer. But it, it, the honest answer is that it's probably cheaper to plug in a 2.4x and a DBX than the DBX that could do a concurrent would probably cost. Right, okay. Um, part of the issue is is that the um, the little microcontroller in the YSPY is hitting the limits of what it can do. So then we gotta bump up to like an arm or something in the wise bio which can cost more. So there is definitely, you know, do we bundle into one device and charge you more or do you plug in the two point four X which is two hundred bucks. But we're 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 working on it and we're working on a replacement for the DBX. Uh, we're trying to figure out if it can do concurrent or not. So can you use the GPS with the channel license pro? <laughs> Honestly. No, I, I no, I I'm not asking I'm I'm not laughing. So you know they yeah. Someone's jamming the Wi-Fi, so my, my screen cut out of the, not for me. the display. Not uh, me. Uh, I'm sorry, what was your question? <laughs> GPS and <laughs> catalyzer. We get a lot of requests for that. Take that away from me. So, because um, uh, I've done a couple of surveys just uh, walking around with uh, the, so one guy was doing the, the normal site survey, like uh, frame analysis and everything, and yeah. I was doing the spec end. Mm -hmm. So, uh, <laughs> For the reporting, is usually the best if you integrate it with Google Maps. Everybody knows Google Maps, so you can show just everything on it. Yep. So if this would be tied to the GPS, yep. then you could easily export it, and j just for the reporting. Uh, and of course, it's easier to to backstep what you did where right. did you find uh, an interferer device or whatever. Right. right. And that's a great point because I know when I do my surveys, I'm taking like. This is where I was at. This is the time, yeah. you know, right side yeah. of the building, wherever. Mm -hmm. yeah. Whereas if you just did, you just literally keep it running that entire time, because yeah. yeah. you're going to have that. There idea. are developers at our office that think that we only do site surveys indoors. So how many of you have done out outdoors? Oh. Okay. <laughs> All right. And that, that's good to know because yeah, we sort of assume that most people are using Channelizer indoors. GPS doesn't work, so why integrate? Now, outdoors is actually where you're going to find a lot of the interference sources yep. for when you're doing yard management <coughs> systems and you're, you're going out and doing a mesh network outside. Okay. You've got more interference sources than you do inside the building. Mm -hmm. At least inside of the building, you've got those concrete exterior walls that are going to yeah. diffuse some of the interference sources from coming mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. And you can control it. Outdoors, you, you can't control anything. You can just say, here's what, here's what exists outside, put up with it, and... Or go find, if you can find the interference source, try to talk politely by him a beer or something. Mm -hmm. I got another thing too. On, am I the only one with the Mac version that is having some slowness? It just no, seems I, like. I no, that's Mac for you. Yeah, well, no. <laughs> <laughs> it, it just seems like when I'm running Channelizer, it just, it, after about five or ten minutes, it just starts to slow down. It just gets really, really. There, there's solid. a few reasons for that. Um, it's not really slowing down. Well, it may be slowing down. I don't. I don't know. It What's the perception, the, right? Yeah. yeah. I don't know how long you're using it for, but uh, we, in in this software, we keep a rolling uh, time span. So if we go to, did you get the stream working again? We don't have the stream. Yet. Okay. We, we've got a camera. One on second. The So we keep a rolling time span. So that me this basically means we're dropping off old data. In the Mac version, we aren't. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. as you walk around, it's kind of like a long exposure on your camera. Everything kind of gets blurred together. And so that may be what you're experiencing. Yes, no, or does the application itself slow down? It, it just down? seems like it's, it's slowing. Okay. So, and, and again, it could be me, but yeah. uh, what about you, Rar? I, uh, I don't, I don't know if it gets slower as I use it. I haven't used it for extended periods of time, but I found the interface 
was laggy when I... Yeah, I mean, the only time I use the Mac application is if I'm just doing a, a, just a quick spot check because mm -hmm. it's not as full featured as yeah. the Windows version. So if you're actually going to use it to do stuff, that's where I have to fire up the VM or if yeah. I'm on my, my X220, then I'll use it there. So I think, I think if we had more of the features, we'd probably be able to start seeing if those if those issues were there. Yeah, so that brings up a good question, like survey. Um, so how many people in here have, have Mac? Raise your hands. So how many of you guys run VMs normally when you're out surveying? I use a separate machine. Okay. And so I'm, I'm kind of curious, you know, in your day-to-day -day job, if we had Chancellor for Mac that was comparable to Chancellor for Windows, who would use it? Yeah. Yeah. The only reason why a lot of us carry Windows PCs is because we're limited to Windows yeah. for our survey tools. Right. As more tools start going over towards Macs, mm -hmm. that's going to be beneficial. And because of the stylus. Check <laughs> <laughs> stick them. Wait, are you, are you saying stylus in your tablet or stylus as it's a styling image? Whatever. Of the <laughs> <laughs> cool. Thanks. Okay.